Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's take a look at the atmosphere energy balance. Energy in versus energy out, and of course that has to be balanced. If it is not balanced, then the temperature of the atmosphere will of course change. Now we know that by the time the energy of the sun reaches the atmosphere of the Earth, we're talking about an intensity of 1361 watts per square meter contained within that energy. But since the Earth is a sphere, the Earth, the sunlight, and the energy from the sun doesn't reach the surface perpendicular everywhere on the surface, only at the equatorial region where the sunlight will be directly perpendicular to the surface. In other regions, farther to the poles, it comes in at an angle and therefore the intensity of the light is going to be diminished by quite a bit. So what is the average intensity distribution across the surface of the Earth as it, the sunlight reaches the Earth? Well, what we have to do is we have to take the 1361 watts per square meter and multiply it times the ratio of pi r squared, which is the cross-sectional area. If we cut the Earth like this and we lay it open, then we look at the surface of the Earth, the cross-sectional area of the Earth. That's where the energy would then hit the surface perpendicular, and we have to divide that by the surface area of the planet, that would be 4 pi r squared. Essentially, we have to take this number and divide it by 4. When we do that, we get about 340 watts per square meter, which is the average intensity of the sunlight reaching the semi-sphere of the Earth on one side of the Earth. So we can say that the average de deposition of energy at the top portion of the atmosphere is 340 watts per square meter on average, which then represents 100% of the sunlight or the sun's energy reaching the Earth. What happens after that? Well, right away, about 29, 30% of it gets reflected right back to space. 23% of it by the clouds in the atmosphere. The atmosphere is more of a scattering effect at the top portion of the atmosphere. And 7% comes from the surface, primarily the ice and the snow that we find in the polar regions on top of mountains and during wintertime. The remainder, well, 23% of that gets absorbed by the atmosphere on the way in. So it turns out that much more energy is absorbed by the atmosphere directly, the radiation coming from the sun on the way in, rather than on the, on the way back out, which is a surprise for most people, I would think. So therefore, you can see that, yes, the majority of the energy absorbed from radiation is on the way in, rather than on the way out. Again, by the molecules that absorb certain types of frequencies and wavelengths of the sun's energy. After about 30% have about 30, after about 30% of the energy has been uh, reflected or scattered back into space and about 23% of the energy has been absorbed by the atmosphere, the remainder, which is about 48%, and I know the numbers don't always come out just exactly right because there's some rounding errors here, but about 48% of the energy finally does reach the surface of the Earth, warming the surface of the Earth. Now, as it warms the surface, it does various things. Part of the energy by, by heating the surface, gets put back in the atmosphere by the atmospheric molecules hitting the warmed up surface, getting warmer due to that collision with the hotter surface, and then as the gas then heats up, it begins to rise because it expands, because it's heated up, it rises then higher up into the atmosphere, depositing heat from the surface into the atmospheric region right here. That's about 5%. 25% is put back into the atmosphere through evaporation. So that's an enormous amount of energy that gets taken from the surface, from heating the water, the vast oceans, evaporating the oceans, bringing that energy then into the atmosphere. So a total of about 30% of the energy from the sun is then put into the atmosphere through conduction and through evaporation. Of the remainder, which is about 17 to 18%, 12% gets radiated back into space and goes into space unhindered because it has the right kind of frequencies and wavelengths that cannot be stopped by the atmospheric molecules. Only about 5 to 6% of the total incoming energy, the 340 watts per square meter, goes back in the atmosphere and doesn't make it through the atmosphere because the molecules in the atmosphere, the greenhouse gas in the atmosphere, do absorb about 5 to 6% of the total energy which is about a third of the radiated energy from the Earth's surface. 
So a total of about, well, if you add 23% to about 5, 6%, that's about 28 to 29% of the energy put in the atmosphere is put there by the absorption of energy either from the sun down to the surface or from the surface back to space. And then about an equal amount, about 30%, is absorbed by the atmosphere through convection currents and through evaporation, adding up to about 59% of the total energy input is then absorbed by the atmosphere. Eventually, that energy makes its way to the upper end of the atmosphere where it can begin to radiate that back into space. So there'll be kind of a flux of energy into the atmosphere and out of the atmosphere. If that flux is slow enough, then the temperature will then reach a certain equilibrium temperature which keeps the world warm. And that's how we have what we call the atmospheric energy balance between energy in and energy out.